Hey guys, welcome tonight. We're really uh, honored and blessed and excited that you're with us right here in the Soar School, School of Awakening and Reformation. And uh, we are so delighted that each one of you all are uh, with us live right here uh, in this uh, room, right here in this gathering. We're delighted that you are with us, and it's going to be a really a great time together. And uh, we are going to begin to um, become uh, more and more familiar uh, with this time so that, um, so that we can uh, learn and develop and grow in really what is a remarkable and amazing season. Number one, I, I want to just encourage you and thank you for uh, giving the School of Awakening, Awakening and Reformation an opportunity to make an impact in your life. Now, there are two or three core values right at the beginning before we get in our lesson tonight that I really want to share with you. And that is, here's number one. This is my big heart. Uh, I really don't want this to just be a time of conversation or a monologue or a teaching or a classroom setting. Ultimately, what we're looking to do is to raise up a generation of practitioners who are exposed to dynamic truths of the scripture and of history, and that we can really begin to apply those things to our hearts and our lives so that we can maximize our kingdom influence in the days in which you and I are living. And uh, so I really want uh, the SOAR School to be uh, a, a school for practitioners. And here's partly what I mean by that. I, I really don't believe that we want to do just another training that gives to us more knowledge or increased revelation even without an application of that revelation to our hearts. And so we're going to be doing a number of things. I'm going to be introducing uh, brand new materials uh, every week. I'm going to be constantly adding uh, new information. Uh, new teachings, uh, and I'm going to be throwing things up uh, in the school, in the SOAR school that you can have access to uh, news and information of revivals and things that God is doing uh, around the world, uh, but then also uh, videos, teachings, lessons, outlines. Uh, I'm going to, I'm, I've been working on a bibliography that I want to begin to put up right at the beginning of SOAR that you can begin to see some really, really great books that I think are transformational uh, in their information that could really enrich our lives in, in a great way. And so I want it to really be a school for practitioners. And by that, here's what else I mean. You know, once we come out of this season that we're currently in and we begin to have gatherings and meetings and all like that uh, across the country, then we're going to really encourage uh, people that have connected with us in the SOAR school who, when they can be in attendance at revivals or conferences or things like that, we really want to engage you in uh, an opportunity to pray, to be involved in a very practical way. And uh, I've really got some great ideas about how we can begin to implement that uh, in, in the life of the ministry. And I really, really believe that it could be a great, great thing. And so uh, we're really excited about that. The other thing that I'm excited about is that I, I really believe that what we're going to do through the SOAR school is not just do one class, but we're going to take a very diverse materials and we're going to begin to teach on those. And uh, in that teaching, from time to time, I'm going to be pulling in uh, other teachers as well. Uh, Jason Adair is one of the best I know. And I'd love to get Jason and Mandy, you know, doing some teaching. I'd love to pull in some others. I've talked to Cletty Keith about doing some things. The uh, Pema brothers from the Netherlands who were with us the other night, uh, they've already created me a video that I'm just going to upload into the SOAR so that we can really begin to add kind of an international flair to the perspective of SOAR and in the presentations from leaders in SOAR. And so the young guy we're going to have on tonight, by the way, uh, another young guy is Fabian Gretsch, 
from Iraq. He's going to be involved in our SOAR school as well. And God is using him to do some absolutely amazing thing. So we really want SOAR to be for practitioners, practitioners, and that is we're going to really try to be very intentional about taking the truths and the principles that we learn and, and intentionally applying them to our lives. And not only that, but apply them to ministry opportunities that you may have in your community or even when we're together in gatherings and meetings, then we would love to uh, do that as well. And so we, um, we want the presentation to be unique and different and, and we want there to be a, a number of contributors. And then we want the practitioner side of that to really be a time where we can actually become hands-on in uh, a global move of God. That's what we're believing God for. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be teaching each night, just like we're launching off the night, our very first class entitled Hosting the Presence of the Lord. And uh, as we begin to look at this tonight, we're going to go through the teaching. And let me remind you one more time, at the bottom of the screen, if you want to interrupt, don't hesitate to click that little button right down at the bottom for reactions, give a thumbs up, give a hands up, whatever, and we will uh, stop the class and we will begin to address any questions or comments as we go through. I think it's going to be a wonderful way that we can really interact. Now, the other thing that I want to begin to develop in and through the SOAR school is I really want to be able to create a real sense of uh, connectivity and community uh, in SOAR. So I really want to encourage you all, many of you tonight here, you may look around this room and you may see the people that are listed on here and you may not know uh, any of them or very few of them. But what I want to encourage you to do is to uh, begin to know and, and relate to others that are in the group. Now, there are going to be nights of SOAR when we're going to be very interaction, and it's not just going to be lectures, and it's not going to be me or someone else talking, but we're going to totally open it up, and we're going to do like a SOAR roundtable where we are really able to have a very real live conversation and dialogue about what God is saying and doing in the earth and what he's doing in our own lives. So we really want to be very intentional about creating connectivity and community through SOAR. That's part of the reason why that when you go to look at the SOAR page on Facebook, you'll begin to see right there on the first page, you'll see pictures of all the different ones that are participating in SOAR. And right now we have about 50, I think, that are, are signed up or involved, uh, getting involved in SOAR. And so uh, it's really going to be a great opportunity to build connectivity and to build community as well. So with all of that said, I want to jump right into the lesson. Now, I want to encourage you, I've already posted uh, today uh, online the outline for this evening. So if you have not yet seen that, if when you registered for SOAR, when you go back to that page, you'll see a bright pink button that has on it, uh, you know, lesson outline number one. And if you click that button, then it's going to take you directly to the Google document, which is the outline for this evening. And uh, so every time when we go to do a class, I'm going to present to you the outline for the evening, and then we'll see how close we stick with that. Now, here's the cool thing. Once you guys get to know each other and begin to interact with each other a little bit differently because we begin to know each other, then what you're going to begin to discover is, is, uh, is that... Um, uh, sometimes I'm not the greatest at following the outline, but I'm going to do my very best to make sure we do. So before every class, I'm going to be posting information on there. Now, I'm trying to make sure that we have ways on there that you will get an alert whenever we post something new. Maybe it's a new video. Maybe it's a new teaching. Uh, maybe it's something else. For example, I've been recording a class 
on the operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm, I'm recording that class on video because it's my intention to just begin to post that into SOAR so that you can watch that and or uh, any video we post, you'll be able to watch it on demand so that when you click on that link, it will open up in a private part of our YouTube channel where you can just watch the video as often as you want or, or watch it whenever you want. So all of the material that we're gonna be doing through SCORE, SCORE you're gonna have access to uh, totally on demand. So I think that's gonna be fun as well. And so uh, I'm trying to learn new systems to make this happen. So I think it's gonna be great, all right? So we're just gonna jump right into this and we're gonna do this. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna jump right into our first class on the hosting the presence of the Lord. And so first, let's begin to pray and let's just ask Holy Spirit to begin to baptize with a spirit of fire like, like um, our, our, our Todd Smith was talking last night. And let's just ask Holy Spirit to bless this time together and bless our efforts together. So Father, we just come to you right now and you guys just help me pray uh, all over the room. And I'm, I'm literally just going to um, unmute you guys so that we can just pray for a minute. So if you would just, just pray out loud together and ask the Holy Spirit to really begin to bless our efforts. So Father, we just ask you right now, Lord, would you fall upon this sore school? Father, I pray that every effort yes, that we all Thank make, you, let it be blessed and anointed by the Holy Spirit of God. Father, Amen. we pray that you would draw others into this teaching. I pray, Father, that we would be a part of raising up and yes, activating an army for an end time harvest of God. Father, we can only imagine how fathers and mothers before us would have long could never have imagined of having a platform like we are having. And Father, we thank you for this privilege. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity. And I know, Lord, that some of the people that are in the SOAR school, I know that they are dynamic and powerful intercessors and ministers of the gospel. And we bless them and we thank you for them. And I pray that you would begin to help us to connect, connect in intercession, connect in creativity, that we might begin to connect with innovative ideas, that we would begin to connect for the cause of Christ in the earth, that Lord, you might be lifted up, that you might be blessed, that you might be exalted, that you might be magnified in these days. And Father, we give you glory and we give you honor and praise in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 All right, now look, here's Amen. You guys, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this up right here. Um, I'm going to um, share with you also uh, each night of the class, I'm going to be sharing with you, uh, sorry about that, did something wrong. I'm going to be sharing with you guys, um, all right, one second. Okay, so we're going to be, um, I wanted to be able to take not only to give you a, uh, a copy of the outline itself and the notes itself, but I also wanted to be able to do a PowerPoint each night on the teaching. And this is just going to be able to help us as we move through this outline. Now, I want to encourage you guys to remember that in class number one, what we're really talking about is hosting the presence of the Lord. Now, in your notes, you'll begin to discover that I begin to share in the introduction to our lesson, I begin to share with you how that in the home and the life that I grew up, as a very young boy, it seemed to be me to be a, a, a very marked difference in my life between the chaos or the violence of my home and the peace and the presence of God that I felt at church. 
My mother was a very devout Christian, and she still is. My father died a young man. He died at age 40. And I remember very early on distinctly being impressed in my life as a young boy by the sense of purpose and by the sense of the peace of the presence of the Lord that I felt in my life when I would go to church. And, you know, I think at times the church has become, we've, we've almost become satisfied to encounter the presence of the Lord. We, we've almost become satisfied to encounter him when really and truly he has called us to embody him. And I, I know that in the scripture, as we begin to go through in this first initial class, which is going to be about three classes long, but what I'm really trying to do from the very outset of SOAR is to establish a core principle of SOAR and of our lives. And that is that we would become a habitation, that we would become a dwelling place that we would become the fullness of the embodiment of Christ upon the earth by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, we know that the church, as I said a moment ago, so many times we hear people uh, longing for another encounter, a fresh encounter, you know, one more encounter, and all kinds of different encounters, when really and truly the aim of the New Testament and the goal of the Father and the promise of the Son, even on this Good Friday, is that we would literally become the embodiment of His glory, that the power of the Holy Spirit would fill our lives to a measure of fullness. Look at Ephesians chapter 3 as well, because it's remarkable how the Bible teaches us that you and I are to live in the measure of the fullness of Christ. And by the way, there in Ephesians chapter 3, the word for fullness in the Greek is pleroma. And it literally means the fullness of, or one writer said, it gave, gives a definition that it, it means the complete composite spectrum of. That's amazing. And, and so what we begin to discover is that many times in the church, we live, if we're not careful, running from encounter to encounter, rather than running from glory unto glory as the embodiment of Christ upon the earth. The Lord desires that his body, that his people, that the ecclesia literally be the physical embodiment of his glory upon the earth. And guys, that goes all the way back to, to, go, to the book of Genesis, chapter 12, 14, chapter 15, chapter 17, where we begin to discover that the hope of God for all nations ultimately is realized by the fullness of the Holy Spirit and the embodiment of Christ in the life of his ecclesia, in the life of his church. We are in sore. We are in this class on hosting the presence of the Lord. We are not on a journey for a theological understanding of the presence of the Lord or the glory of God in our lives. We're not, we're not trying to embark upon a theological exercise. But what we are on a journey to do is to discover afresh the reality of the kingdom of God manifests within us. Friend, you and I know that the Holy Spirit of God has been given to us, that he might lead us and guide us into all truth. The Bible says that he would teach us, that he would, he, he's our nourishment, he's our strength, he's our supplier, he is our sustainer. So we begin to realize and we begin to discover some beautiful and dynamic principles in the scripture. So number one, the first scripture that I want us to look at is really in John chapter 18, and it's verses 1 through 11. And I love this passage. And if you've never really spent much time looking at this, I, I can't think of a better day to look at it than the day we're on right now. No matter when you're watching this, we just know 
that this is a great day to encounter the presence of the Lord. And so we just celebrate that. But I want you to look at uh, John chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. And I want to encourage you always in soar. I want to encourage you to always have your, your Bible with you. And then also I want to encourage you to uh, also have a journal nearby you or a place where you can take note, notes and, and, and write some uh, things down that the Holy Spirit really begins to show to you. Now, I want us to look at John chapter 18. Now, many of us have encountered the presence of God. Friend, let me just remind us that it's possible to encounter his presence and never be transformed by his presence. Come on, somebody. It's, it's possible to encounter his presence and never submit or surrender or even acknowledge his presence. And, and so what we do begin to discover in John chapter 18, we see one of the most remarkable encounters in all of the scripture. And watch, the, the chapter begins like this. When Jesus had spoken these things, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kidron, uh, where, where was a garden into which he entered with his disciples. And Judas, which had betrayed him, watch this, knew also the place for Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, after he had received a band of men and officers of the high priest and of the Pharisees, came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Now watch this. Then Jesus, knowing all things that should come unto him, went forth and said unto them, Whom do you seek? Who are you looking for? Who, who is it that you're looking for? Now, remember, they came at him with torches, with lanterns, and with weapons. They came to him for a violent purpose. But look what happens. When Jesus asked them, who is it that you're looking for? Then verse 5, they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to him, now listen to what he says. This would be a great word study for you in sore. And really and truly, we probably need to dig down sometimes into some of these uh, scriptures in uh, John 18, because it really is amazing. But Jesus said, I am he. Amazing. I am he. Now, it's, it's incredible. Look, don't take my word for it. Just make you a note right there in your journal or in the notes on the outline. Make you a note there because those are three words that would be well worth your study when Jesus says to them, I am he. Now watch this. Now Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. Now look at verse six. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, watch this, they all went away backwards and they, every one, fell to the ground. That's amazing to me. As soon as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and they fell to the ground. You know what they did? They just encountered the presence of God. Now watch this. This is really key, guys, going for us a full word in the next couple of classes. All we're doing right now is trying to begin to lay the foundation. We're just kind of beginning to expose the core of this. We're just really beginning to try to take sore and dissect it a little bit and look at the center of it and unwrap the heart of it and begin to discover what it is that we are desiring in this time together. And so here they encountered the presence of Jesus but they were not transformed, certainly, by that presence, even though, watch what happens. As Jesus said, I am he, then they suddenly begin to stumble back, and they, everyone, fall to the ground. And then he asked them again, who is it you're looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I said unto you that I am he, therefore, if you seek me, let these others go their way. And so, guys, what I want to encourage you with is that we are often, 
we often have had times in our lives to encounter the presence of God. Now, the picture that you see on your screen, I chose it deliberately. Many of you know exactly what the picture is that you're looking at, but some of you may not. But that is the old uh, Cane Ridge meeting house in Bourbon County, Kentucky. That is the site right there of the outbreak of the Second Great Awakening. That building that you're looking in, I took that picture. That building was built in about 1792. And the, uh, you see that we're standing up in a balcony. In that time, only the slaves were allowed up in that balcony where I'm standing taking that picture. At the far end of the picture, you can see a small door at the opposite end of the building. And it was through that door that the slaves would have to climb up a ladder on the exterior of the building, and they would have to come through that door onto this balcony level because the slaves were never allowed on the main floor with the free people. And watch this. They, they were never allowed on the floor until the Holy Spirit began to move in the pastor, Barton Stone, and some of the elders there at the church, and he began to move mightily in them. And the Spirit of God began to bring revival into that little church. And, and I love it because uh, Barton Stone, back then, this was before 1800, Barton Stone ordered that balcony that you're seeing me take that picture from. He ordered that balcony to be torn out. And on the next Sunday, they were going to welcome the slaves onto the main floor with the freemen. Now, listen to me, guys, that was, you talking about revolutionary? That was revolutionary. It was amazing. It was totally unheard of. It was it was incomprehensible for that time. And you know what? They did tear the balcony out that, that week. And luckily, as God would have it, a farmer nearby stored that, all that lumber for that balcony in a family farm in a barn about a mile from that meeting house. And it was kept there generation after generation until at the mid-1900s, they decided to replace the balcony for the historical significance of that amazing building right there. Now, guys, I'm just telling you that what you're looking at right there is a site of the Second Great Awakening. It's an epicenter. It's a birthing room. It's a place where ordinary men and women encountered the presence of God. I, I just want to let you all know that in SOAR, we're not looking for just another encounter. We, we can't live just from encounter to encounter to encounter. Because what ends up happening is we always living, we're always living with the anticipation that the next encounter has to be better than the last one in order for it to be God. So friend, we have dramatic and bold encounters with God. I'm not discrediting any of them. My life has been radically changed by encounters in the presence of the Lord. All I'm saying to you is there's more beyond that encounter, and that is we must begin to embrace his encounter. Now, I want you to look again at John chapter 1, verse 14, and uh, like I said earlier, this is in your notes, but I want you to look at John chapter 1, verse 14. And in this verse right there, and by the way, if, if my Bible reading sounds a little bit weird, it's only because my favorite Bible is the Geneva Bible from, the 15, from 1599. I just, I just love it. So, um, so that's why I'm reading out of that. But look at John chapter 1, verse 14, and it says, and the word... Uh, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw, look at that, we saw the glory thereof as the glory of the only begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. And John bare witness of him and cried saying, this was he of whom I said, he that cometh after me was before me, for he was better than I. 
But I want you to look at that verse 14 again. And the word literally in the Greek where it says, and when he saw the glory of God, it, it's a verb in the original language, and it literally means uh, to behold. But watch this. It's so amazing to me because the word there doesn't just mean to behold with the eyes to just behold with the natural eyes. They did not just look upon him as a man in flesh and blood, even though he was. But the word gives us the idea that they did not just behold him with a natural eye, but they beheld him with the eyes of the spirit and they embraced the full revelation of who he was. So look guys, what we wanna do as carriers of the fire, what we want to do in SOAR is we want to raise up a generation of ordinary men and women who move beyond the uh, religious uh, exercise of just trying to live from one encounter to the next encounter, just get me by to my next encounter to the next encounter. What we want to do is we want to so uh, be emboldened by how we begin to view him. We want to behold him. I don't want to just see the word. I don't want to just see the word as a physical book, but this is a living, breathing document recorded by men and women inspired of the Holy Spirit of God who would record for us the brilliance of his appearing, that we might see him, not just with our natural eye, but with the eyes of the Spirit as well. Watch this. They looked upon his flesh, but they beheld his glory. They embraced his presence. Now, the third part, of, oh, by the way, if I'd gone back to that other picture, uh, I don't know how to go back to that other slide. Let me see if I can go back there just a moment, because let me talk to you about that picture. I took that picture one night. Uh, we were in Scottsville, Kentucky, and the Spirit of the Lord had given us a specific word about the glory of the Lord coming upon the children. Actually, it was the, in that meeting that we taught for the first time ever about the communion fast, and we felt the Spirit of the Lord just moving mightily in that room. And, and the children were worshiping, and the children just begin to take uh, flags and streamers, and they begin to wave them and dance and sing. This was with pastors uh, Scott and Sue Klein uh, down there at Breath of Life Ministries. And so I just had my camera in my hand, and I just turned and snapped a picture, and, 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 and I just loved how the picture turned out. But many times, and for me, it's a beautiful reminder that we don't want to just see the gospel with the eyes of our understanding. We want to see the gospel. We want to see Jesus. We want to see the earth. We want to see his kingdom. We want to see him, not just in the eyes or the revelation of the flesh, but we want to see him where we behold his presence and we embrace his presence. Now, the third part is Colossians chapter 1, verse 27 literally that we are to embody his presence. Now I'm going to turn over to uh, Colossians. Um, and again, you may have your notes in front of you or you may have your journal, but I hope you have your Bible. And it's good to have your Bible with you because it's, it's good to get accustomed to uh, turning through your Bible and become a student of the word. But look at Colossians 127. To whom God would make known what is the riches of his glorious mystery? Let me uh, look, guys. What is the glorious mystery of God? Think about that. Paul writes about it in the book of Ephesians. He writes about it in the book of Colossians here. The glorious mystery of God. Friend, let me just tell you that the glorious mystery of God is that the fullness of God through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, that the fullness of God might begin to live within us. Verse 27 goes on to say, the riches of his glorious mystery among the Gentiles, which, which riches is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Wow. 
And so we begin to discover, not just in that one verse, but in many other places as well, that indeed the divine supernatural plan of God is that indeed you and I might not just encounter his glory. How many of y'all know sometimes, sometimes we encounter him, but then we don't press in further to get more of what he has for us, right? We, 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 we so much enjoy the encounter that we, we never build upon that encounter. And by the way, that picture there, uh, I took that picture, and that's in uh, New Mexico, right outside of a little town called Truth or Consequences. And we uh, went up the beautiful top of this mountain and, and um, one of the men with us, I'd given him a, an appeal to heaven flag and he stood out there on the, on the edge of that cliff and uh, began to point. And, and I just, I love the picture because when we embody the presence of God, he begins to launch us on assignments and launch us in ministry and launches us in ways that we would have never done before. Now, I want to take you and I want to give you uh, these things tonight in lesson number one, and then we're going to wrap up. And then lesson number two, I'm going to pick up right back. We're going to do this class on hosting the presence of the Lord. We're going to do three separate teachings on it. So in this, you will end up having, uh, in this one class, you'll end up having at least three hours of teaching on hosting the presence of the Lord. Now, I want to take you to Isaiah chapter 60, and I want to just introduce this passage to you. And uh, what we're really calling for through the ministry of SOAR is that we would awaken a generation and that we would summon a generation to arise and that we would call a generation to ascend in the place that God has called us to be. You and I know we're living in absolutely, guys, we're living in remarkable days. Y'all don't need me to tell you that. And we don't know, we don't know, I mean, we don't know. We, we don't know what's coming, right? But here's what we do know. We've read the end of the book and we know that the church is gonna be a part of, of, of reaping a, and a supernatural end time harvest in the kingdom of God. And we're gonna see the nations of the earth blessed. And I really feel like through SOAR, God is giving us an opportunity to speak into a generation of hungry leaders that we might say to them, now it's time to awaken, uh, awaken to the embodiment of his glory in your life, awaken to the revelation of the manifest presence of God. Awaken, arise, and ascend. And so we begin to discover, and, and I'm going to a, a different Bible right now, uh, but I, I'm going to this Bible because in Isaiah chapter 60, we begin to see that the Lord begins to minister to Israel. He begins to minister to the church of all time that we might awaken, arise, and ascend. And watch this. I, I just want to kind of go down through a few verses of this. And I've got six different verses that I want to highlight for you. And in the notes, I left some room there in between those because it's my prayer that the Holy Spirit will begin to give you revelation and insight on each one of these scriptures that you might begin to write them down and that you might begin to record what the Lord is saying to you. Watch this. Isaiah 60, we're familiar with it. But it begins by saying, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. I love that. And by the way, the word there in the Hebrew for arise and shine, in the Hebrew, it is kumi orai. And it literally means, watch this, it gives us a picture of a man or a woman laying flat on their back. If you could imagine me just laying flat on the floor on my back and I'm laying there and then suddenly the Lord says, kumi orai. And literally what happens is from in one motion, I go from laying flat on my back to an upright standing position in one, one moment. 
like that. Literally, it means uh, uh, awaken, arise, and ascend quickly. Watch this. It means hold on, something's about to happen. And I love that. So it's almost as he's saying to us, spring up. Kumi uh, orai. Why? Because the glory rests upon us. So what we begin to discover in, the, in, in hosting the presence of God is, guys, I want you to understand, the Lord always takes the initiative concerning us. He always does. God always takes the first step. Maybe you heard our friend, Pastor Todd Smith, who, who recently said, you know, that, that, that uh, it's, it's in our turning. You know, it's, it's when Moses saw the burning bush that he turned that God began to speak. But before Moses turned, the bush was already burning. God takes the initiative. God takes the first step concerning us to rise up, to come forth, to break out, to rise and to shine. And, and, and in that verse, we literally get the idea <coughs> that the Lord is calling us <coughs> to not just awaken, but to arise suddenly and to ascend suddenly. Can I say to you real quick, can I say to you that I believe that part of what God wants to do through SOAR and what part of what God wants to do in your life is he wants to begin to give us a, a quickening word of God that will allow his glory to come up on us and cause us to rise up uh, bolder and brighter and bigger than we've ever been before. The second verse that I want you to look at is verse 2 and verse 14. Look at this the glory of God. Now, this is why we want the embodiment of the glory of God or the presence of God in our life. His presence comes to rest upon us. And when his presence rests upon us, he awakens us. He causes us to arise and to ascend in the manifest presence of God. And what happens when he does? The Bible says that the glory of God subdues the darkness around us. Is that not amazing? Look at verse two. Look at that real quick. He says, see darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises up on you and his glory appears over you. And the word there for glory is, is, is like the brilliance of a sun. Uh, the, of the sun. It literally gives us the, uh, the, uh, the picture in the original language. It gives us the picture that the glory of God rises up on us, and it, the picture is as of sunbeams from the presence of God begin to illuminate our life that will cause the darkness around us to be subdued simply because we're in the room and we are, we are an embodiment of the manifest glory of God in the earth. And, and then look at verse 14. The sons of your oppressors will come bowing before you, and all who despise you will bow down at your feet and will call you the city of the Lord, Zion, of the Holy One of Israel. And so we begin to discover that the glory of God subdues the darkness around us. Number three. The glory of God will draw the lost. Friend, the greatest, um, the greatest tool for effective evangelism or witnessing is, is for what you say or minister to someone else. Be in agreement with every other area of your life. It's Dr. Caroline Leaf who talks about even as Christians, sometimes we get involved in this cognitive dissonance, which she calls it, which is we say one thing with our mouth, but we believe another thing with our heart. But watch this. When our heart and our mouth are rightly aligned, declaring the word of the Lord, there's no greater tool in our lives for evangelism and winning the world than the glory of the Lord on our lives. Look at verse three. Nations will come to your light 
kings to the brightness of your dawn, lift up your eyes and look about you. So literally, we begin to discover that one of the, one of the critical reasons why it is imperative that we don't just live from encounter to encounter, but that we take seriously hosting the presence of God in our life is because the glory of God upon your life will, eat, will be as a brilliant, radiant light in your life. And guess what? The light itself will subdue the darkness around you and the light of his glory will draw men It'll draw women, it'll draw the harvest, it'll draw nations unto you. Now, let's look at the, the last ones of these. The glory of God, by the way, releases provision. Look at verses 5 through 13 of uh, Isaiah chapter 60. It will release supernatural provision of God. Wow. He begins to give to us this amazing picture of the camels in uh, Isaiah 60, he begins to give this uh, a, a, a amazing picture of the multitudes and how God has the capacity to bring to us provision in every season, under every circumstance, in every time. I was reminded today that, you know, being in this time of kind of shutdown and quarantine that we're in at the time of this teaching, uh, I was reminded today that not all happens, not all that's negative or bad happens when we are quarantined. Paul wrote nearly two-thirds of the New Testament while he was in prison. So the fact that he was in prison, he found more time to write, I suppose. Now look at number five. The glory of God removes violence upon the land. Now that's amazing right there. But if you look at Isaiah, if you look at Isaiah chapter 60, verses 17 and 18, let me, let me just go there just for a moment. You, you know what our culture needs? You know what our, the environment of our nation needs? We need a move of God. Look at this. Instead of bronze, I'll bring you gold and, and silver in the place of iron. Instead of wood, I'll bring you bronze and iron uh, uh, pieces uh, in, in place of stone. I will make peace your governor and righteousness your ruler. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders. So watch this, guys. The glory of God that, is, that you carry is a key to suppressing darkness, releasing provision, bringing light and hope, drawing people, and removing violence on the land. And number six, and the last one, the glory of God accelerates the purposes of God upon the earth, verses 18 through 20. And guys, right now, we are living in a moment of time where we are seeing and we're about to see even more a divine acceleration of the purposes of God in the nations of the earth. Hear me when I say that to you, because I believe that with everything in me. We are in a time, a moment of acceleration. So I just bless you guys. When we are hosting the presence of the Lord through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we stand to declare the word of the Lord, the options change for all who hear the word of the Lord. When we host the presence of the Lord in our lives, kingdom authority is released in our lives and his kingdom power flows through our lives. So guys, that's why we need the embodiment of his glory in our time, in these days, in this generation. We need an embodiment of the glory of God. Now I'm gonna go back here and see how I can uh, do this. I wanna stop sharing. So I'm gonna stop sharing there, that, which should bring us back together here. Now. So guys, uh, I wanna take a minute. I wanna unmute all of you guys and we're gonna be done. We started about 10 minutes late. And so, but I wanna be done in, in just three or four minutes. Uh, I really wanna keep you to about 40, 45 minutes uh, each time. But I wanna unmute this a minute and see if you have any questions or comments 
that maybe you'd like to ask or share in uh, lesson number one? Any, anyone like that? Just jump in. You were talking about like how, you know, how we can ex encounter the presence of God, but never surrender to it. Like what, why do you think that God allows us to like put that off like again and again and again? You know, because it's like a lot of times you always saw, you know, it was like Saul or somebody like that. Yeah. Um, I know that now we're under grace and stuff, but you also have like conscience here. Well, you know, and, and Brandy is a great question, but one of the things we discover is one of the most powerful things God's ever given to mankind is he's given us a, a will to freely choose for ourselves. And, yeah. and it, it, is, it is unconscionable to us, the power of that will. And uh, God's not going to force us. He didn't make us to be robots. He's not going to manipulate us. He's going to woo us as a lover into a posture of, of a, a pure response to him. And, and, but it's sad, and we've all seen it. People who sit in amazing services and outpourings and, and never make a move. And uh, many reasons for that. We can't judge that. But at the heart of it, God's given us a free will, and he's going to allow us to make those choices. Somebody yeah. else want to jump in there? Somebody else? See, if you breathe too heavy, your picture comes up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> See there, Mary, you live, so I got you on the screen. Okay, anyone else? No, I just want to ask something about what she was saying. Um, what, are you saying somebody has an encounter with God, but they're not transformed, or they're just in the presence where there there could have been an account an encounter? Well, the, the men who fell back to the ground in John 18, they encountered the presence of God, right? But their lives were not transformed by that encounter. So what I'm talking about is people can be in the presence of God. They can be in a revival. They can be in a meeting. They can be driving in their car and the Holy Spirit begin to deal with them. We can be in that moment where God begins to reveal himself to us. And, and unless we yield with our hearts, and like Todd was talking about, unless we turn to him, you know, um, then that's when he speaks. And so uh, that's, that's what we're trying to communicate there. Thank you for a great question. Anybody else want to jump in there? And uh, we'll see how this goes. All right. Hey, can I ask a question about that picture of the Cane Ridge Church building? Yes, ma'am. That's not where uh, Brian Hunt was up there doing a thing one time. I think you were there. Yeah, yeah. We, we had uh, Brian Hunt right there. Yeah, he's there. Yeah, I yeah. still wanted to go to that. I watched your whole video, but I didn't get to go. Yeah, that's it, exactly. looked, it looked like that. That's what uh -huh. I thought it was. It looked like that church. That's what yeah. I thought it was. Yeah, it, it's exactly where we were. He was standing. We had the prayer time right down there. And I'm telling you, the people multiplied that day. I think, uh, I mean, it, we prayed for people. The building probably doesn't see 150 people, maybe. I don't know. But, I mean, I, people, uh, we prayed forever for people. I don't know where they all came from. <laughs> but yeah. it, it was a great day. So thanks for asking about that. And we love Brian. All right, guys. Well, so good. Well, God bless you guys tonight. Thank you for jumping on. Now Thanks I'm gonna you. I'm gonna take this and post it on YouTube, and um, but only those who are a part of SOAR are gonna have access to it. Okay, and so um, but I'm gonna begin to post other. I'm just gonna keep pumping material up there, and so I hope you'll make yourself available to it. And uh, we're going to be adding some other things as we get going. But we wanted to do our first lesson uh, tonight together. And so we're going to be building a little bit more. Um, as a matter of fact, 
when you look at the notes uh, that I provided for you, you'll find at the bottom of the notes that I gave you an assignment for our next class. So uh, be sure and check that out because you need to go look at Luke chapter seven. Valerie, I saw Valerie's hand go up. Oh, no, I was just um, wanting to thank you for putting this together. I think the content's excellent and um, we need uh, equipping. Wow, thank you, Valerie. Thank you guys, I appreciate that so much. And um, you know, it's just really weird for, and, and you know Valerie better than probably anybody else on here, but really for the last number of months, the Lord's really been having me trying to figure out some things about this kind of platform. We didn't see what was coming, but we're so glad that the Holy Spirit uh, gets us ready for the days that we're now in. So thank you, Valerie, very much. Hey, God bless you guys. Thank you for jumping on, and um, we'll see you guys again real soon. So awesome. have a great night. God bless you all. Thank you. Luke Bye. chapter 7, go do your homework. Okay. Bye.